Our next um, speaker is Pelintan, an art historian and sociologist uh, working at the Kader Has University in Istanbul. Um, in the New Media Department, assistant professor. And uh, here we're going to be discussing um, artistic interventions, uh, dealing with exactly what the social is in terms of uh, social housing, using Istanbul as a, as a context. Uh, as we're running behind, I won't make the introduction any longer than that. Palin, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm firstly, I'm going to summarize a little bit what is going on in Istanbul. I think for today there's a, there were some several examples that could be compared on different level. Um, of course, is the, is, is, I use Istanbul as an um, example, uh, but what is going on in a governmental level and social level in Turkey, it's um, um, valid for other cities in Turkey. It's not only Istanbul. I mean, it's also Adana, Izmir, Diyarbakir, other cities. Um, but um, in this short period, I'm going to show um, and explain what has been going on since 2005 and uh, how people organize themselves and how they cannot organize themselves. Uh, and um, in, in the 2000s, um, the um, Greater Municipality of Istanbul um, decided um, some parts of Istanbul, let's say districts or neighborhoods, um, to be transformed. Uh, there were several reasons which district they were chosen, and uh, there were also uh, several reasons about their justification. Um, first, um, they chose um, some neighborhoods which are in a historical peninsula, and let's uh, call it in, in, in historical part of the city, Constantinople, and um, Pera, a uh, few districts like Sulukule, Ayvansaray, Tarlabaşı, Balat. Um, these are uh, past former Ottoman neighborhoods um, and um, quite um, heterogeneous since the structure of Ottoman Empire. Um, not they are global and heterogeneous, they having identity of heterogeneity right now. They were always, uh, they had a heterogeneous um, multi -commun communal um, life. Uh, um, from different ethnic groups, from also from different religious group. Um, the other part of the um, uh, decision were for the neighborhoods that are mostly on the periphery side. I mean, is there if there is any periphery in Istanbul anymore? But it was uh, um, this part: Pendik, Kartal. Um, and some in Küçükçekmece and north, up nor north Sarıyer. These neighborhoods, they were, um, we call them now, post Gecekondu neighborhoods. Um, Gecekondu, you might heard, the Europeans, they know very well. Uh, they like to romanticize uh, as a social, romantic social housing concept. And uh, these were the... Hmm, uh, dwellings that were built um, by the Anatolian immigrants who came in the 60s to the Istanbul um, to serve the industrial uh, capital, industrial, in, industrial um, capital, I mean capital, uh, uh, and uh, a lot of workers, they started to work in the fabricate, and they, the, the government didn't supply any um, housings, and what they did, they um, just built their own houses and governmental land. Um, uh, I want to um, clarify two, con two concepts. Um, one, government, public space and private space. The division and the meaning, definition, is totally different than Europe. I think uh, one of the speakers today, he talked about that. When we speak about public space, it's mainly governmental space, yeah? which is coming from the legacy of Ottoman Empire. It's an empire land. Um, and, uh, 
private space uh, generally is leveled. In, in real sense, in, in a Western sense, uh, private and public space actually doesn't exist. But we, are, we, we, we know somehow since nation-state experience in Turkey, uh, since the last century, we somehow we know what public space and private space is, but the, the depth meaning and the, and the roots of the words um, and definitions are a bit different. Um, when I say privatization, um, it is again different. It means uh, property transfer, land property transfer. If I say government and public um, space um, transforming to private space, I mean, privatizing it, it means the government um, change the property statue of the governmental, governmental space in the, in, to the private uh, space means uh, opens for re-speculation for real estate market. This is the um, uh, meaning, if I use this term. It's a bit different, I have to um, bit give cl clarification, I think. And uh, um, the municipalities, um, since 2000, they have a big and strong role in Istanbul and other cities. And uh, they are directly connected to the main um, state, Ankara, uh, even directly to Mr. Erdogan, to the, lead, to the minister. Um, this is the historical peninsula, Constantinople. I will speak more about that. And I want to sh uh, explain um, there are few policies that was established in 2005, uh, which are very somehow dangerous uh, urban policies that gives big power to local municipalities in order to transform the land, um, privately owned land by the citizen in him and herself, or um, governmental land uh, that is under government, uh, but uh, they want to provide for private initiators. So there is two types of um, land transformation. Um, code 5366, um, um, this is um, for urban renewal areas uh, that justifies um, I mean, in, in simple way, the government says uh, in any, any, any, any neighborhood like Tarlabashi or Sulukule, um, we have to transform the space um, because this neighborhood we have to transform urgently because um, it needs upgrade thing and um, we, it, it, it, it, is, it, it needs um, urban renewal, I mean, renovation. This is the justification. And um, they use this quote. Um, we say, agile agile kamulaştırma, urgent expropriation. Um, as soon as you apply this policy, you can say that this pol uh, we have to apply because this neighborhood is um, under not good condition. Earthquake can happen. It's, it's a dangerous um, area. Or, um, yeah, this is, this is the kind of policy you, you can only use in, in urgent condition, natural disasters. So it's a kind of, by law, you justify, um, you make normal condition, unnormal condition. By making unnormal condition, you justify the law. It's something that, um, exactly what Agamben is speaking. So you create policy for unconditional, um, um, the conditional land and uh, urban spaces. Government and uh, Toki was built um, and was established by the government. It's a governmental administrative ministry. It's uh, the, you can go to website. Um, it, they have also English website. It's directly um, connected to the le uh, minister uh, and uh, also Mr. Tai Erdogan and uh, directly connected with local municipalities. They say, we build social housing. And uh, by saying that, uh, they uh, evict um, neighborhoods. And they built their own, uh, with the collaboration of co construction companies, even though itself, the company is also, com I mean, not company, but yeah, this is very, uh, uh, 
Yes, it's a, it's a governmental department like a company, like a real um, estate uh, market company and construction company. This function different way. And uh, they have an aim to build as much as social housing uh, in, in the future in Turkey. And uh, they, what, what they do, they um, apply the code. They did apply it for Sulukule, uh, which is an um, inner um, city wall um, neighborhood, 70% um, uh, Romani populated neighborhood, uh, which are not immigrant uh, Romani community. They are living there since 400 years, placed by the Sultan of the, um, that time, by the emperor. So they are not immigrants coming outside uh, Romanic population and living there. They are living already there. They are the citizen of the city. And um, it was totally, um, this policy was applied to that uh, neighborhood. It was a pilot um, um, project for the municipality. They succeeded. As soon as they succe succeeded, they went to other um, neighborhoods. Um, what they do, they apply um, very fast um, policy uh, when it goes to the parliamento, parliament, and then a toki comes. Uh, in the meanwhile, the neighbor, uh, the, the neighbor slowly has been evicted, uh, like Suluk I mean, in Sulukule, by the municipality, and then toki comes and builds now luxury housings, and for them is social housing. And um, then the, the reason what they use, for example, for, for the um, Sulukule, no, Romani neighborhoods, they give justification in the media. They spread uh, news about the identity of the neighborhood. Like, is, uh, this is a gypsy neighborhood, there's a lot of track. In Tarlabashi, there's a lot of forced Kurdish community living there. It's about the neighborhood is very this, contaminated with terrorism. Yeah, we have to clean out uh, this kind of justification in the eye of the media and in the eye of the general citizen, general public, um, it gets justified. I mean, you think that, yes, this neighborhood should be really, uh, the people should get kicked out. I mean, we don't want terrorism. Oh, these people should really kicked out. We don't want drug and prostitution. And in which is in reality doesn't really exist. The Article 70, 73, this is the most dangerous article, uh, policy. You read, it gives total power to municipality. Um, it was a continuation of 5366, uh, social and housing, what was more concerned social housing. This is more about, I will tell later, um, the possibility of the third bridge of Posporus. We have two bridge that connects two sides of Istanbul, and the municipality wants to, and the government wants to build a third bridge in the north of um, Istanbul uh, to um, connect some gated, gated communities, I mean, satile cities, and um, of course, revalue the land, which is mostly forest. Um, in, and this is the most dangerous things now we're dealing with. Everybody's against that and uh, we're trying to stop the government to take this decision. But by creating 73, that allows them any kind of land between 5 and 100 zone or unzone, I mean, master or non-master plan, they can transform, which is more uh, preparation for the third bridge. Um, there are uh, several neighborhoods. Um, I was giving um, different... Um, Different, they have different identity. I mean, Istanbul is a big city, and um, each neighborhood, historically, uh, historic mean, I mean here, one partly as a heritage from uh, Ottoman Empire structure, empire city structure, or um, 70s industrial um, period structure, like Migration, immigrants, uh, when, the, when the city received a lot of immigrants in the end of 60s, uh, workers from Anatolia and uh, Gejekonda areas became, I mean, this whole self-made houses became in the 80s legalized. They got infrastructure, they got paper, uh, ownership paper, uh, the owners. So those Gejekondos are all legalized. They became even the center of the city now. There is no periphery. I mean, they are uh, mostly little centers in the city. This is one of it, Bashibuyuk neighborhood. In the middle, you see the houses that Toki built. And the municipality forced the surrounding, the houses, the inhabitants, to move those buildings, 
leave, leave them or sell them to the municipality, the other houses, because the municipality wants to demolish and build luxury houses. Uh, this is their aim. But Bashibuk is resisting. Even though they are 70% um, pro-party, nationalist, uh, conservative neighborhood, um, they voted 80% um, nearly to AK Party, to the um, um, recent party, and um, then they really fight, resist against the municipality. And the, the mostly the women were uh, the, the women housewives were resisting because they said um, they they don't they, they need money. Their husband has to work, and the the, the the children they have to go to school. So then they went to the street uh, for two moms. Uh, they built tent because there was a lot of police, of course, um, and uh, so they it was a kind of. Um, um, kind of long-term resistance and still is in process. Um, uh, this is more some of the picture from Bushwick 2007. Um, the police waited a um, long time there. And um, Tarlabashi is one of the historical uh, neighborhoods. There is a pilot project going on. The municipality invited five architecture office one of the architecture office rejected to, to take part in that. And uh, the other, they took part. They worked with the municipality, which they called participatory design. Uh, this is a very strange, I will tell later. I mean, what, what we say, what, what, what do you mean about participatory design? Right to the city, privatization, I mean, everything is, has different meaning. And, uh, uh, and confusing, uh, confused terms and contaminated words. And social housing is, for me, social housing is a sign of corruption, in, for me. In, in, in, and the, the title of the symposium is social housing, for me, is very, I was very scared, it's very dangerous. <laughs> and uh, if you come from a different geography, you have a different, uh, um, this is Ayazma, near Olympic Stadium. Very poor Kurdish po um, committee was um, evicted. Um, this was very easy to evict, of course. If you're more poor, more ethnically marked, it is more difficult to um, resist. Um, all neighborhoods who, who were decided and who were marked by the government, by the municipality, as an urban transformation, urban renewable area, this is what they called, Every neighborhood constructed their own um, association, non-governmental association, against to um, resist the municipality. And they collaborating, collaborated and collaborating with a lot of artists, academics, and uh, any kind of people who are concerned on this issue. And um, God's sake, we don't have public art foundation and funds in Turkey. That is, um, uh, there is no question of instrumentalization or instruments or something, <laughs> because there is no funding, and, uh, and never government asks you to do something. Uh, even if you want to do, the government will, I think, uh, be very... Uh, uh, prevent you to do it uh, if you're an artist and want to do something. And the uh, Istanbul um, Neighborhoods Platform was established, and you see Erdogan Yildiz, who was a speaker, um, he was a leader. He's a Gecekondo developer himself. His, father's, his father came to um, Gülen Sogülsü neighborhood in the 60s as a worker from Anatolia and built their own houses. And um, they did. Uh, Actually, it was a very heterogeneous um, group of people uh, who went from one neighborhood to one neighborhood, collaborating with the um, associations in each neighborhood and trying to create a kind of solidarity. Um, uh, not so strong is this sol solidarity, um, but um, the most famous one was Sulukule platform, which was totally an autonomous and non-hierarchical um, platform, which a lot of um, activists, uh, academics, and citizens, other, other part of the citizens from other neighborhoods, and, uh, and artists, and uh, who were totally disagree each other. But they were, con they were on consensus on, uh, on resisting against the municipality policies. Um, of course, Sulukule doesn't exist anymore. Last summer was totally demolished, and uh, there are now luxury housings. Uh, villas uh, is being built, and uh, 
the, some the um, owners, I mean the ownerships, the municipality and Toki in collaboration with Toki, they offered um, other Toki houses for long-term um, kind of um, mortgage system that most of the Romani population and other poor people couldn't deal with that. I mean, they took the possibility, uh, also the tenants, they, they moved to other parts of the city, to Toki houses, but they couldn't live there. First, they couldn't really provide the monthly fee back to the municipality. Secondly, uh, they had a different lifestyle here, totally in the street level, and they couldn't live in the apartments. They couldn't continue their um, social um, style, lifestyle. Um, and this was one of the photographs that they were making some cross when, when the, before demolishing the house. Most of them are demolished illegally. And uh, the pe person uh, who lives there had to put some paper saying that, please don't demolish, this house is a legal house, we have an ownership paper. So um, it was, um, we organized all together also some meetings, a lot of meetings which, which didn't lead to anything. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm sounding so pessimist, but um, um, when the municipality decides and apply this policy, um, there, is no, there is no way um, to really resist. But um, we, um, with the whole um, groups and um, the neighborhood association, we created together um, a kind of loose solidarity. I mean, we are not so much agree to each other. There is a lot of political conflict uh, among people. There are different kind of leveled leftist people there, and there is so much problem. But we try to, I mean, when is third breach um, demonstration or when is something demonstration, uh, people come together. and. Uh, there were some. There are some artists um, who collaborate, but not. It's more than collaboration, and it's more like um, they're trying to um, visualize the process. Because the most important thing is also the visualization and keeping the memory. When it's so, everything is so fast in the city in Istanbul. The transformation is so fast. You you you forget so easily that there was a neighborhood there. There was some people and community there. And uh, you, what you have, you have on, only the, the visual production in your hand. And most artists, they really uh, helped. Uh, Hafriyat, artists run space, they offered their own space for showing, exhibition, and meetings. So there was a kind of collaboration like that. And um, there was a lot of problem with this, um, with our group, with um, other groups. I mean, let's call general um, um, urban oppositional uh, movement, if there is any movement. But uh, first, the associations uh, of the neighborhoods, they were, they were doing internal meetings always. I remember four years ago, five years ago. And then in the last two years, they became more together. Um, and uh, there was several um, reasons um, why really people cannot come together and create more powerful total um, oppositional movement, um, I had some witness and also a geographer uh, who's very involved, Jean-Francois Peru, who lives in Istanbul. Um, there was some reason. First, the ethnic, the difference of ethnic identities. I mean, in Sulukle was more Romani pop populated um, uh, population. In Tarlabashi, more um, Kurdish forced migrant, uh, I mean, who were already evicted from their village and from the east and moved to Tarlabashi. So they were, they were second time, they were evicted second time. And the instability of local population is that, I mean, they feel unstable. I mean, they don't, they don't have any inner trust, those people, those community, because they're already evicted. And they think they are so much accepting, even though they have ownership, they think they can be evicted easily by the government, if the government wants. So it is so difficult to convince this community or, or person um, that, uh, that he, she has a right to go to court. Um, this is a, another problem. Of course, the language is also a problem. When a Kurdish woman receives a paper from the municipality saying that you have to move out in the morning, even though you own the house, she doesn't read Turkish. So it is another problem with, the, with this understanding and speed reaction, uh, fast reaction. And everything is happening very fast in Istanbul. Urban poverty, 
Um, for example, in Sulukule, everybody is based on precarious labor. I mean, you earn money that day, you eat, that's it, you find something. And, that, and in this kind of condition, it's difficult to, to um, create self-organization. I mean, this is, they're really in a hard condition, like Ayazma. Um, this is, was a big problem, an obstacle to really keep up with the um, uh, resistant movements. And um, Istanbul is a big city, Sarayar is something in north. Sometimes I don't have money to go to Sarayar, and how can a Sulukule person can go there, or how can these people can go? I mean, the share of solidarity between among the neighborhoods that can lead to a more powerful um, reaction was not so much possible. We, we did a lot of meetings in the last years, but it was still uh, it was a problematic. And um, different uh, disagreements of tools. I mean, like conservative, some leftists, they didn't like Sulukule that they were using media and newspapers for example. You know, there was some kind of conservative things, which media we should use, which visual dissemination. Uh, and artists were very helpful in that. They can create easily visual dissemination that goes around the public to the normal person, to normal inhabitants, uh, and who can, who can uh, normal middle class person, family, can uh, be aware what is going on in the city and uh, what the government was trying to do. Lack of information of legal rights. A lot of lawyer works in, uh, there's also a little NGO uh, run by a few people. One is a lawyer. They really worked a lot to, and working a lot still. Um, I learned a lot of rights, ownership rights, uh, on property rights and tenant rights. I mean, rights to city during this process. I didn't know myself as an academic, uh, somehow educated person. Even I don't know myself, so it was, and um, dealing with local municipality. The municipality copies everything. They ask you to meet, you meet them. You say, I, you, you, you explain about social and social housing, and then one month later, they come up with a presentation in public space and they're saying they are creating social housing. They're copying immediately. And this is like a, a fast game, and you have to keep up. When they do something, you really have to react quickly. And uh, this is something, uh, the social housing discourse is the most dangerous thing that Toki is saying now. And the misunderstanding in the, among the oppositional uh, groups of the, the right to the city. We, we were lately uh, recognized, we, we were very late, that most of the ownerships, uh, owners, especially in Başıbüyük and Gülensu, Gülsuyu and Tarlabaşı, they, they defend their right I mean, they think right to the city is property-based, um, right, property-based manifesto, which was uh, the main um, obstacle that um, a lot of activists or people like me, we had to go with the tenants and ownership in two different ways, because at the end, they wanted to have a good deal with the municipality. They end up uh, like that. So there was a different understanding what is the right to the city. And uh, this was the main problem of um, if you go, um, if you defend property-based um, and ownership-based um, rights. Um, some of my friends, um, like geographer Tuna Kuyucu, he, he always uh, disagree with me because he says, oh, Pedin, they have, to be, they have to go with that because Toki and the government doesn't put any choice to how to define right to the city. I mean, this is the only cho choice to go with it. He's, he thinks like that, for example. So this is a very um, in, uh, important discussion to um, go. Um, I want to show uh, a little uh, video. Um, so I'm, I'm more how to create, uh, I'm more thinking, I mean, I lost my hope, but I'm thinking still how to create more um, strong oppositional movement. Is, is that about, of course, the, ter the, the, the topic is today uh, social housing, but we have third bridge coming that we will lose a lot of forests in north of the Istanbul. There is an ecological concern, and they just, there's a lot of justification with earthquake or in Turkey. I mean, like now in Van, there's an earthquake, and now Toki is going to build the new houses, of course, in Van. This is, they say, they, they, this is their task. Um, so you see that Toki is keep um, justifying uh, with the same discourse, uh, social housing discourse, and, uh, and the whole other terrorism, earthquake, you know, what threatens all the society. And is, is there any other, how can we base on the commons? Well, how we will define in a specific condition in a specific city? And if there is so many different actors, 
and different heterogeneous communities. Um, this is the main, I'm thinking how to do that. Tools, what kind of tools um, can be used in autonomous dissemination? And um, what is the role of the art? And, um, and I, I, I think maybe we, could, we should go further and leave the social housing discussion and institutional, institutionalizing, or different kind of institutional discussion, governmental institution and um, cultural institution. We should go beyond to really discuss new ethic. What, what will be the new ethic of um, living together, um, which can go beyond um, uh, this whole ownership, social housing. This is why I'm, bit, I, I'm sorry, Joanna, I'm a bit I disagree on the previous discussion. Uh, this can be maybe case in Holland, but in terms of ethics, it will take us nowhere, I think. This is my, um, my concern, I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to show you um, one. Um, this is uh, why I called my title uh, Conflict and Unconditional Hospitality. I didn't talk about that, but conflict, as we know, is kind of antagonism that how can we go with conflict, you know, be, be not normalized by the government, even by our own institution, but really by in conflict to recreate, recreate the uh, discourse and uh, um, resistance and, um, and the new forms of uh, language in that way. And unconditional hospitality, um, you, you maybe know it's, it's a reference to Derrida. He was speaking more about immigrants in Europe, but um, it's more, I think, about uh, its, its roots goes to Levinas. It's a new ethic of, of um, karşılaşma, eti, um, karşılaşma, encounters, ethics of encounters. Um, is that, is, is, I wouldn't say ethics of the other, uh, that more Judith Butler is discussing on, on Levinas, it, it, more on the encounter, I would call it. Um, I don't want to make a other discourse of other, um, although Butler um, very nicely sophisticated discussing about this issue, but this was more unconditional, a condition of unconditional hospitality. How can we think about hospitality without property and ownership? and without rules of the host and the uh, and, uh, host and the um, misafir um, host, uh, guest, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to, we ha there are uh, filmmakers, uh, artists that we collaborate a lot, Imre Balanna is one of it, Nejla Osarian, um, um, she, she is also in Sulukule platform, and uh, she also, I'm going to give the video link, I'm not going to show, because I'm, I, I'm getting very, um, I'm getting very bad to show this movie, and I don't want to be embarrassed in front of you. You can watch in home yourself. And this is Imre Balan's uh, one documentary. Biz öyle yapmalıyız ki ulaşım taleplerini azaltalım. Kentlerin ta Yeah. 
Herkes kesin gözüyle bakıyor üçüncü köprünün yapılacağına. Bizim anayasamızda barınma hakkını... This is Ayazma, district. Bir barınma yeriniz olacak ki, oradan bir eğitime ulaşımınız olsun, sağlığa ulaşımınız olsun. Orada, orada bir çevre hakkı olsun, sağlıklı bir çevre hakkı olsun. Hem mekansal dönüşüm hem demografik bir dönüşüm e, projesi aslında kentsel dönüşüm. Bütün e, kenti iyileştirme, güzelleştirme adı altında esas olarak bir paraya tahmin etme, bir sermaye birikiminin unsuru hale getirme. Oradaki nüfusu da bu steril İstanbul'un dışlarında bir yere bloklama fikridir esas olarak. the road to them after 15 years to the force four times demand apparently it's impossible İstanbul'da 1985 ile 90 yılları arasında nüfusun en çok arttığı iki ilçe var biri Kağıthane biri Ümraniye Burada bir devasa nüfus artışı var. Baktığınız zaman Kağıthane ve Gümraniye Fatih Sultan Mehmet Köprüsü'nün iki ayağını neredeyse temsil eden iki önemli ilçedir. Ve bu ilçeler aynı zamanda köprüye en yakın olan ilçeler. can give the link who wants to watch further there is another Nejla Osarians uh, which is about the demolished Sulukule neighborhood I cannot see it maybe you want to see yourself this is a very nice uh, documentary about the whole process of eviction and very sad actually I can give the two link is online you can see in your I mean, free time and uh, thank you very much
thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Pelin. Um, actually, for a very good context, um, summing up a little bit. You can get closer. I, I don't bite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, a context also of what we've been speaking of, a little bit of yesterday uh, and today has, uh, has returned uh, in, in, in what you've presented us. The notions of uh, the local, uh, the role of a municipality in all of this, um, uh, the role of, uh, of government, judicial potential or disinvestment. Um, we see slums. Uh, a lot of things are returning in, in, in this uh, presentation you've given us. I have two questions and then I'm going to open up to the floor. Uh, the second is about that local. I I'll return to that in a moment, but uh, you're talking about what the possibilities are for cultural producers or artists, in this case a filmmaker. Uh, what, what you've shown us in this movie, uh, you say that the second one, the, the Sukule, is also very sad. Uh, it's, it's quite a framed movie. There is a lot of uh, drama uh, in the way that it's made and in what it presents. W what is the audience uh, for this? In Istanbul, I mean, here uh, it comes across quite uh, harsh, and, and some people may not uh, be familiar with such a situation or believe it. Um, who, who is this f film made for, and what kind of potential does it carry with it? Actually, um, I, I think, and I know, the film is more for the locals. Of course, it's more almost also international um, people, but more to show to municipality and people normal. Um, uh, population uh, just to warn what will be hap what will what is happening what will be hap happened and uh, these are very low uh, low budget things I mean low budget production and uh, and it's it's mainly for um, for the own population of Turkey the audience institution municipalities and uh, yeah I mean. Um, uh, I think it's more, Im of course, um, if you, um, you can um, um, create pressure um, in Turkey uh, by defending European Union. Yeah? You, you, you can uh, go sell that um, Turkey is a candidate of European Union to be the full membership. Turkey can, has to change this and that and this. This is, a, this is somehow which I don't like, uh, um, which could, which is a kind of strong uh, EU um, pressure, is a strong... Um, uh, Still today? Uh, not today yeah. anymore, <laughs> since one, two years. But this was something that, um, like, you can, you can show to UNESCO this. Uh, and, uh, and UNESCO uh, can decide, say that, oh, you cannot build this here, this bridge, or they're, they're building under bridge in Halic now, in Golden Horn. You can say, I mean, f international uh, bodies like UNESCO, EU, that, and this, UN, um, I mean, they are all somehow corrupted, but I mean, <laughs> let's say they can be. Uh, they can be kind of an outsider pressure f of the Turkish government. Uh, this is what the government listens to, as it were, or at least uh, share a horizon with. Sometimes they agree each other, so I don't know, I cannot... Uh, I mean, I faced in Sulukule a lot with UNESCO um, people who visited a lot and tried to raise more important uh, see on Sulukule. Um, I, can, I cannot say it's total positive uh, about that. Um, can be a pressure. Uh, maybe this kind of visual um, um, production is it's, it's for that also. And uh, but is not only that. For example, Nejla's uh, in videos and all. It's all about the memory also. Everything is fastly um, dissolved. And I was with Jean Francois Perus uh, two months ago in in Turkey in an internal discussion, and he said that. What we can only do is visual uh, recording, because there is nothing left behind otherwise. Uh, As Marietti said, those who control the present control the past, the Orwellian quote. This is another thing, of course. I mean, people quickly forgot, and uh, they justify, and they accept easy, easily. The, even the person who's elected himself accepts so easily. This is very sad, I mean.
You mentioned, um, which I think is interesting, uh, UNESCO and Sucule. So from a, a, a macro view, uh, really a global institution to a very local uh, part of the municipality of Istanbul, how these two can, can relate to each other. At the same time... Uh, Not only that, there's also a board, uh, a preservation board, right. who somehow justifies, uh, gives or justification for to transform historical sites. But this is another issue of corruption of heritage, you know, and, uh, you c and there is a lot of uh, examples, I guess, also in East Europe or, I don't know, other parts. It's more about heritage. It's not my field exactly, but um, this happens also in case of Sulukule and Tarnabash a lot. We pressed the preservation bo board to really um, um, take the right decision. Mm -hmm. From that uh, uh, situation such as Sukhula, do you believe in locality, the, the potential? We saw a list of, of uh, aspects that are actually uh, getting in the way of that, uh, uh, uh, complications mm -hmm. in the potential of the locality. Earlier mm -hmm. today we've seen some presentations that are really uh, pressing for, mm -hmm. the, for the locality as the potential to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Do you still believe in, in, in that? Or have you ever? I don't know. <laughs> we'll let you think about it. Oh, yes, I'm thinking. I'm sorry, I don't That's know. That's okay. Yeah. Qu are there questions from the audience? Statements? Over here. Um, raise your hand again, please. And if you don't mind, stand up for the camera. Thank you. For the camera, everything for the camera, right? <laughs> thanks so much for recording all this. Um, and thanks for your presentation. I have a question. The people who... Um, are evicted in Istanbul in all these neighborhoods and are forced to sell and so on. Where do they go? Yeah. Um, Toki offers um, housings and they make a deal uh, both with tenants and the ownerships. They say that you go out from, your, from this house, um, they get very in a cheap price, very cheap, in, this is what happened in Sulukule and they offered the same in Tarlabasha, a cheap price, uh, the value, I mean, lower value what normally gets their um, house. And then they offer Toki houses. Um, like in Ayazma, um, of course, some of the population lives in the tents. Some of them went into Bezirgan Bashe Toki houses. And uh, with Sulukule, they went to Tashaluk, like 30 kilometers far, and other Toki houses. But they went, they couldn't they couldn't pay the monthly fee kind of mortgage because still the municipality applies 15 years mortgage. Even if it is a very low price, they cannot pay because they're really poor. And as they are out of their neighborhood, they cannot continue their little economy. So there is a double poverty. They are already poor. And then the economical chain, what they have in their neighborhood is demolished because neighborhood is not only shelter, is the, is the place for economy, is the place for social. Um, if, they, if they don't have the neighborhood, they don't have their job place anymore. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Pushed, pushed towards the border yes. of the city. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Some of them in Tashaluk, there is no one anymore. They, they moved back to their relatives and so on. They couldn't deal uh, with uh, paying heating bills and this and that. They couldn't live also in, in the apartments, but it's a more, almost also um, very, it's very far, 30 kilometers, you pay a lot of money to go and come back and they don't have job. I mean, everything is related with the geographical area and how the whole economy is connected with the people and communities. Istanbul is a very big city. This is the, if it would be, an, we would be discussing a small city, they could, maybe could be the reason different, you know. Uh, but in Istanbul, I mean, it's, uh, you have to offer money to cross somewhere, to get, go somewhere, I mean. And, uh, and they, this is how they justify the Toki and municipality says, yes, we, we, took, we take them out, but we offer them social housing. And yeah. other questions from the audience? Here's one. What is Toki? I guess it's a bank. Okay. No, no. It's a, a Turkish uh, housing administration department. This is the, uh, you can go in English site. It's very well done. They say they are going to solve the housing problems in Turkey. It's an administrative department. It belongs to the ministry. 
and the former director is now the is now uh, urban ministry now Bayraktar Erdogan Bayraktar, who used to be who established Toki and who used to be the director of it. And how is the subdivide towards uh, the more municipal and eventually a local level? Is there a administrative hierarchy in that? How does that system look like, or is it hard to explain? Between Toki and municipality. No. The different levels of Toki. In, in you mentioned it as being a, a ministerial, which means for the entire Republic of Turkey. But yes, yes, yes. But how does it finally find its way uh, towards uh, the, the most micro level? Um, how Toki is reaching? In, I mean, the, I don't think it's so important this because there are different departments, and the, the, the most important thing is Toki uh, creates leads the policy, urban policy. I mean, they are urban planners, and it also builds, they provide a um, kind of construction firm. So this is the most interesting thing. This is what David Harvey talks about, how the government itself, how the governmentality is transforming into neoliberal governmentality, that the government exactly behaves like a real estate market. This is the total um, equivalence, I think, what David Harvey is talking about, uneven development of urban space. Uh, we have a question up here, and then I'll take yours in the back. Um, I, I uh, Pelin, thank you. I just wanted to, to ask you, uh, um, it, it's, it's a, it could be a very large question, whether you could briefly explain what the concept of hospitality you're working is from Derrida, from Agamben, and how it might offer some kind of alternative. How are you seeing as it an alternative in some way to some of the problems that you've suggested here? Yeah, it's a very, in, in one hand, it's a very abstract um, yeah, concept. I but in one hand, um, it's, I mean, unconditional hospitality is very much based on property uh, and the rules, how the host offers to the guest. You know, this is the whole relation. I mean, Derrida was speaking about Europe, uh, immigrants and as asylum seekers and refugees, um, and who puts the rules and uh, this on. And, um, but we never thought, I mean, the architects, they never thought about unconditional hospitality, I think. I mean, in architectural uh, context, I, I think it's a, it can be an important new, not new, of course, it goes until Levinas, but kind of a um, search for a new ethic um, of unconditional uh, hospitality is what Derrida describes, a radical experience of encounter, a radical experience of space that you don't know who is the guest and who is the host, and the guest can capture you or kill you, or you don't know that. Um, and this is why it is radical, because it is unconditional. I mean, this is a very um, nice, clear um, roots of words, linguistic, that he describes. And um, like um, today, um, there was an example of Vakuf that. Um, what was the name of the um, architect? Yazid gave, um, Vakuf is total, I would say, um, an 80% equivalence of unconditional hospitality. Or literal, literally, uh, literal space. If you look for literal space, Kervansaray and Vakuf could be. But I'm, I'm not searching for a literal architecture. Um, um, although we can discuss about that, but more uh, um, a kind of uh, different, Ethic, um, ethic of face and um, encounter. This is what I. This long talk we can do, but uh, <laughs> okay, we're going to take a, a last question in in the back, the gentleman. Really, more of an observation. Um, part of this conference is about foregrounding uh, artistic and creative interventions. I'm thinking back to the tent city strategy, and I'm wondering, it's purely a, a fantasy, if the people who are going to be displaced by the bridge, the two bridges, or the bridge, third bridge, if they were to create tented cities on the two existing bridges, would that open up a different conversation with the government in Tokyo? Uh, I didn't understand. On the bridge. The English, I could... On the bridge. Sorry, I couldn't understand your English. Uh, can, would, would He's asking if, uh, the, if, if, if I understand the, the question correctly, the construction of this bridge could actually offer a, a platform for tent cities? The existing bridge. The existing tent cities. Stop the traffic. Mm -hmm. I'll, 
on the bridge. And would that open up a different conversation with the government in Tokai? Do you, do you think Firstly, of where the third bridge um, areas, I mean, the areas of the third bridge, it's more forest. We're concerned on the ecology of Istanbul in terms of third bridge. Um, Plant trees on the bridge. <laughs> Plant trees on the bridge. You want to just think about that? No. Okay. <laughs> um, any more urgent statements, questions? Uh, last chance? Palin, thank you very much for your presentation.